Okay. We look at another uh, example. So this one is your tutorial question number nine. So again, we go for a simple system and then we uh, keep on building your uh, confidence in solving problems. First, we start with a simple U cube. Then we increase with the uh, uh, inclined uh, arm with the additional pressure from one side. And now we look at uh, a more complex uh, manometer. So if you look at the diagram here, uh, all the units is in CM, so be careful. When you come to exam, the first thing uh, in your calculation, uh, change all the unit into unit SI, which is in meter. So change this one to meter and others to avoid you error in your calculation. So if you look at here, we have point A and point B, and then you have uh, a lot of U-turn, and you have a uh, different medium here. You have uh, water, H2O, you have mercury, you have oil, and then with mercury again, and then H2O. The question mentioned that the water flow through part A and B Lubricating oil is in the upper portion of the inverted U, which is this one. Mercury is in the bottom of the mercury band, which is here. So oil supported by mercury medium. Determine the pressure difference PA minus PB in a unit of Pascal. So Pascal is unit SI. Pascal in other term is Newton over meter square. Okay, Pascal is pressure. Pascal is pressure. Recall your physics uh, definition. Pressure equal to force divided by area. So if you put in a uh, unit force, you know that force is Newton. Area is meter square. So Newton over meter square also Pascal, okay, P. We put the diagram to one side and we start to solve the problem. So we want to find delta P between A and B. Okay, we are given a multi-liquid manometer which is uh, at a standard of your test. All right, and pressure difference AB in a unit of Pascal, or just now uh, we mentioned that uh, pressure we need to put in Newton over meter square. So to use Newton over meter square, be careful to change, uh, remember to change all the unit to meter. Governing equation, we're still using the one. Delta P equal to rho GH. However, you see the mathematic sign here. This one is a summation of all the pressure that you get there. Okay. Of course you can you can write row uh, row i g i h i but the gravity is the same so you can pull the g outside the summation sign. And again, call your definition of SG, specific uh, uh, gravity, equal to rho divided by rho water. Uh, some tips for you is that every time you see there's a different liquid used in the system, straight away pull the SG equation into your answer. Okay. Uh, this equation and this equation give you one mark, one mark. They have two free marks here. So assumption, again, we have a static fluid and incompressible fluid. We're going to label our H or D accordingly. In this case, I use D. So 
10 cm is D1, distant from A to the horizon of your Mercury. D2 is the position from the horizon, equivalent horizon, to the top of the Mercury here. D3 will be the distance, equivalent distance from this point to this point is D3. D4, again, you look at equivalent position to the surface of another point. Okay, and D5 is from the point, equivalent point to uh, the last uh, reference point that you're interested in. Okay, now in here, this example, just, just uh, illustrate that we only, because our governing equation is rho gh, our interested to look at h only, which means the, the, the difference of the height from the reference point. So for example, for example, in this case, you will see that uh, the h that I label in the diagram here is only, for example, this arm, I'm only interested in 10 cm. And for this second band here, I'm only interested in 3 cm here, and 4 cm doesn't matter to me uh, while I'm looking on at the 4 cm at another end here. This is the portion that I'm looking at. These are the portion that I'm looking at. And then uh, this one also. This is the portion I'm looking at. Okay, this is the portion I'm looking at. This is a portion I'm looking at. So these are the important area that you should focus on based on delta P equal to rho G H. Okay, so I'm going to go a bit further. All our height, we are using Z direction. Going up is Z. Going down is uh, the z, uh, negative z, yeah? So all the distance going up will be positive. All the z going down will be negative. Okay, before solving, okay. Um, yeah, so go up z, go down, go down is h. So at this point, our reference point is zero. I'll move forward. We will work from B to A. We will work from B to A. Of course, you can work from A to B also can, but I'm, I'm showing you uh, the step from this way, from B to A. Okay, the equation I show you, I will explain now. We are looking at B to A. That's why when we do delta P, we always take the second point or end point minus the start point. So that's why in the working of your equation on the screen here, because I'm moving from B to A, A is my endpoint. So that's why I write PA minus PB. So in exam, be careful on the direction that you write. If you write something, if you write PB minus PA and the content here is not agree, I'll give you wrong answer, yeah? So just uh, be careful on the direction that you are measuring. The change of pressure between B to A 
given by delta P. And then uh, we start with the first pressure field by the, from here. This is the first region that you're looking at. The first region give you a pressure one. This to here, rho G H section one given you by a positive value. Why? Because we already defined every time you go down is positive, every time you go up is negative pressure. Yeah, so be careful when you import your information. We are going from point B. So the first pressure filled by the water will be rho G H. The H here is your D5. The second region, the second pressure given by the mercury here. will be this height. So, will be rho g h. The h is positive d4 because it's, it's going down. You compare this point to this point, it's going down, yeah? your h is going down. So you're going down positive. You refer to this point, to this point, going down, H is positive. So H positive, pressure increase, uh, pressure positive. So positive for the first one, positive for the second one. Then the third portion, you draw the equivalent line. You look at the starting point of the oil, which is here. The end point is here. You compare the distance. Yeah, you compare the, uh, the distance. The distance is 4 cm. Does it go up or go down? Uh, Oliver, if you refer to oil, starting and ending point, go up or go down? It goes down. Go down. From starting, yeah, go down. Okay, then I need to repeat one more time. Repeat Force. the whole cycle again. Force. We're going for B to A. We're going to direction B to A. All the direction, if you go down, your H go down the pressure will be positive. If your H is go up, your H, your H is going up, your pressure will become negative. I start from B again. Starting point, one, I label as one. End point, I label as two. So starting point, end point. So your H is go down. When you go down, pressure positive. Then you look at this one, you clear already for water. Then for mercury, I use second uh, pen. Start point, one, end point, Two, start point, end point, H number two, H go down, pressure positive. Oliver, this is the question for you. When you look at oil, it's going up. You know, uh, so yeah. oil, start point, 
endpoint. So uh, start point, endpoint, go up. So you get the negative pressure. Negative. So you have positive, positive. The third one is negative. Who else have, don't understand the positive negative? I understand, sir. Lawson, okay. Uh, Oliver, okay, yeah? Yeah, okay. No, it's fine. Now I continue. The fourth section. Start point, end point. One, two, go down. Positive. Then the last point. Start point, end point. Start point, end point, go up. Then you go up, negative. Okay. So this is how we write the, the sign, positive and negative sign. Make sure you understand uh, as this will come into your test or final exam. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's why when I say that um, it's important to mention where you start. So in our case, we start from B to A. That's why we get a positive negative sign like this. If you calculate from A to B, then the positive negative sign will be different uh, according to the step that I showed you just now. Okay. So the next step is just substituting all the number from appendix A and then you convert into unit SI. Rho and SG value is in the equation. Okay, this one, rho, H2O, uh, Hg, oil, all these are inside the appendix. So you do the conversion. You'll get in Newton over meter square or Pascal. Okay, I don't, I, I don't include any number here. You go and calculate it. Important is your understanding on the principle how to solve it. Okay, uh, clear everyone? Yes, sir, clear. Any question you want to ask me? Yeah, can I? So far, no question for me. Good. All right. Uh, just a quick, quick, uh, uh, quick question. Let's say your B here, I cut the B here. I cut the B here. So the arm over here exposed to MOS rate. And again, I ask you, what is the gauge, gauge pressure at X here? This, this arm will expose to MOS rate huh? at X. What is the value of the gauge value here? Supposed to be zero. Zero. Okay, yeah? yeah. Everyone clear? Huh? So how to how to answer this kind of question? Uh, don't don't uh, at the end you forget uh, then uh, no, no. <laughs> all the bonus mark you wasted uh. yeah okay. yeah okay the next one we look at ideal gas so ideal gas uh, uh, only one important equation you need to remember which is p equal to rho rt all right only one equation this is the answer for the tutorial question number 10 they ask you what is the uh, ideal gas equation of states so every time you deal with gas, and then uh, if the question mentioned ideal gas, um, straight away you write uh, P equal to rho RT, then you get the free marks for the equation. Okay. Just concern again, the R value you refer to appendix A. T here is absolute temperature. Um, yeah. Uh, this statement is referred to the uh, US uh, atmospheric uh, chart that I show you in the beginning. Uh, you see that uh, there's a change of elevation uh, attitude to the temperature just now. And yeah, we call back the equation P equal to rho, a, uh, rho GH. So we write in the differential equation dP equal to negative rho GDZ. 
Okay. Again, if I write the P equivalent to negative specific weight dz, you should also understand. Yeah. So uh, specific weight equal to rho g. So you substitute the rho g. Uh, not rho g. Your rho. Uh, your rho. You rewrite this one. This equation. You rewrite. Substitute the rho here. You will get this one. Okay. You will get P over RTG dz. And there's an equation for temperature. Uh, if you refer to the uh, US atmospheric pressure, uh, the temperature decreases linearly with altitude. So there's an equation for your temperature here, the absolute temperature. Okay. So your T equal T0 minus Mz. Then you integrate uh, the variable. You put the equation above in the integration sign. Uh, how you convert uh, from here to there, you pull your P to the left hand side. You'll get the P over P. And then on the right hand side, you have the negative here. Uh, so uh, the, the negative sign is missing in my progression of my uh, equation here. So when I prepare slide, there's a typo error. So there's a negative sign here. So again, I apologize for the typo error. So there's a negative sign. So negative, G, and so on. When you integrate something with one over parameter, you'll get long. Same with this side, you get long. Okay, so here to here is your integration steps. All right, if you don't know, go and uh, read the calculus uh, textbook. You rearrange the equation. You will get G divided by MR long because you. Uh, you summarize or uh, you simplify the equation t0 divided by t equal to 1 minus mz divided by t0 and if you remove the ln in the equation you will get p equal to p0 a constant value exponential power g divided by mr so this basically is the derivation of equation from by using equation of states and the definition of your uh, pressure. Okay, you use P equal to rho RP and P equal to rho GH. In this case, we use a differential pressure uh, equation. Then you do the integration, rearrange the equation, you will get this form. Um, yeah, just now we define our t equal to t0 minus uh, mz. So you uh, rewrite the equation, you will get uh, p equal p0 t p0 g divided by mr. Okay, stop here. So this is for the uh, pressure uh, variation in a static fluid. Any questions so far for ideal gas? Any equation that uh, no one? Uh? Okay. Uh, now it's one thirty. Um, we go a, a little bit more deeper. Okay. We look at a hydrostatic force. Hydrostatic force is a popular uh, question in SM. So make sure you know uh, the, the principle behind uh, hydro, hydrostatic force. So we need to focus on three things. Every time we analyze something that uh, inside the water, 
focus on magnitude, direction, and line of action, meaning it's pointing up or pointing down or left to right, uh, because this all this will give you positive and negative sign. Okay, so uh, later on, focus on mag magnitude, direction, and the line of action of the force. We will start with the derivation of equation. So this diagram uh, is inside your hands out also. It's uh, uh, below question 12 in your hand now. But anyway, um, we're going to explain uh, this diagram on the screen right now. So let's say you have a, a, a plate that go inside the water. Right, look at the left hand side uh, diagram first, then I will explain the, the one on the bottom. So let's say you have a plate that go inside the water at a certain angle. The liquid density is rho, and the plate is along y-axis, and z-direction is going down. If I highlight with my mouse here, the dot, the green color dot is coming out from the screen. Okay, the axis, the three axis, the orientation of x axis, at least you should uh, make it clear. So you have the y axis which is parallel to the plate, the z going this way, and then the x direction is coming up from the screen. Huh? So you are having a pressure, the water pressure pressing on this face. So we're going to derive some equation to calculate the hydro hydrostatic force on this surface. Okay. Now the diagram below, which is on the right hand bottom of the screen here, is what you see from this dimension. Let's say you have an eye. You look on the plate, you will see what is on the right hand corner here. So what you see from on the plate here, you're looking at y and x axis. Okay, you're looking at y and x axis. You're seeing the shape of the plate here. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, at least you have some idea on the diagram first. Um, at least you know the orientation, how, uh, where is the position of the plate and the axis, at least you know how it oriented first before we go into a further detail. Yeah. Um, the next concept I'm going to highlight is to call back the definition of moment or torque in your dynamic class. What mean by moment and torque? Let's say you have the force and you are referring to a point of reference to calculate the moment at point A, uh, maybe point one. And you have the distance from the point to the force. The distance must be perpendicular to the reference point and perpendicular between uh, force and distance. The action or the, the, the results of this force on this point at a distance of D will generate a moment at point one, giving by F times D. Okay, this is a moment equation. The force and D must be perpendicular, must be 90 degree to each other. Okay, because later on, we're going to use moment concept to derive our equation. Okay. We move on. Eh? Uh, highlight the surface of your plate here. This surface is lying on XY plane. Yeah, it's lying on XY plane. Um, what else? Origin. Yeah. Okay. 
origin, where is the origin? Is the intersection of your rectangular axis or XYZ axis to the liquid surface. Your origin here is the intersection of your reference axis XYZ to the liquid surface. Again, since we are looking at static float, static, static, the word static means not moving. Since there's no movement in the water, there's no shear stress. So we will take away the effect of shear stress in our derivation. How hydrostatic work is that it will always 90 degree to the surface. Let's say this is your water. If you have a object, this object is having a surface here. So the force will always 90 degree. This one also 90 degree. Here also 90 degree. Here also 90 degree. Yeah? So to the surface, yeah? we're looking at the surface. So uh, hydrostatic are always 90 degree at 90 degree to the surface. No matter what is the orientation, you always look for 90 degree and have a force in it. How you calculate um, uh, pressure? Again, pressure equal to force divided by area. So since we are looking at a very small element here, our A will be, in this case, you see this one, the dA in the diagram on the screen here, the one I highlight. The dA here, how you calculate the area, you take dx times your dy. This is dx, this is dy, you get your dA. So the product of your dA is dy dx or dx dy. You can write your force in the differential equation. dF equal to P dA because your pressure equal to force divided by area. We are looking at force. Now we're looking at force. So force equal to pressure times area because we are looking at very, very small area on the plate here. So that's why you use mathematics to represent a small area or small changes with D equal to P D A. Okay, these are the basic uh, understanding before we go deeper. So the first equation when we derive hydrostatic force for uh, image uh, submerged a plate is force equation df equal to pda and the a just now is you know that uh, this da is a product of dx times dy to find the resultant force we integrate okay all the force on to the surface here to find the resultant force this one, the one on the diagram here, labeled as FR, the re resultant force, the total forces acting on the surface here. We take all the small df, we integrate from this point to this point, we will get the total force or resultant force acting on this surface. Okay, stop me uh, if you're not uh, able to digest or something that uh, doesn't make sense to you. Stop me and ask me question. Then, uh, because hydrostatic uh, useful parameter is your H from the surface, we want to convert all our equation here in terms of H, especially for pressure. So again, Call the definition for pressure just now. Change of pressure equal to rho gh 
Okay, rho g h is the change of pressure, it's not pressure. If you write P equal to rho g h, wrong, huh? is a change of pressure, rho g h, then this one correct. So change of pressure, you take P minus P zero equal rho g h. Okay, clear your mind, huh? rho g h is a change of pressure or pressure difference. And then we, we try to convert our H in term of Y. Looking at here, this section. Here to here, this height. O to Y axis, this is Y axis. So the distance from O to H is your Y. If you if you measure from along the Y axis, so you have a Y here. So uh, we are focusing on this small rectangle here. I'm going to draw over here. You have your H, you have your Y, you have a 90 degree here, you have a angle here. So again, call back trigonometry. Opposite hypotenuse, we are using sine theta equal H Y. So your H in term of Y will be Y sine theta. Okay. So later, the H you replace Y sine theta. So result, resultant force, we have FR equal to integrate of all the pressure times the change of area. Because FR, here the FR, you sum all the DF on the surface here, means you integrate all the DF here. And F equal to P D A. Okay. D F equal to P D A. Okay. Then just now we define our pressure. Change of pressure equal to rho G H. So you write the pressure at the H here will be equal to P0 plus rho G H. Okay. Pressure at here at H here. Pressure at H here will be this equation, P equal to P0 plus rho G H. Then I'm going to show you all the equation in one go. So again, remind yourself the H equal to Y sine theta that we explained just now. And we're going to uh, work from the left hand side here. So your resultant force equal to integrate of PDA because your force equal to PDA and then you integrate uh, DF, you integrate both sides, you'll get this equation. And then the definition of pressure is this one. P equal to P0 plus rho G H E A. Substitute the definition of H y sine theta. After that, you expand or you break the equation into two pieces. One is P zero dA. You integrate dA, you get A. Plus, you integrate the second portion. You pull all the constant value out. You'll get integrate y dA. Any questions so far from for the left hand side uh, equation? No, sir. Anyone not clear? No, sir. Good, huh? All right. Now we continue. Huh? 
again what is moment we're going to 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 look at moment now i explain what is moment force time distance so when you integrate your y times the a you will get you can write as yc c is a centroid of that surface centroid means that if you give a, a square centroid is a, a center point where your uh, your center of gravity will, will take place centroid c right and your just now you 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 write over here so when you integrate a y dA, you can write this term in y c a like that. Okay. First moment of the area when you integrate y dA, you can write y centroid a. Okay, so far it's just all the mathematics steps from here to here or from FR integrate PDA into this form. Okay. We continue with the slides and then you pull the A to one side. So your FR or resultant force equal to P0 plus rho G sine theta Y centroid times the A or you factor out the A. A few more slides, then we stop here. Yeah? Okay, so from the resultant force, we can write FR equal to integrate A PDA. It is you are finding the integration of the small forces here, this one, along this surface. You can convert from this 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 form to P zero plus rho G sine theta Y centroid times A. So you could you can also write this term P zero plus rho sine theta Y C can can be written as absolute pressure at the center of this uh, element. Okay, P C pressure at centroid, and this one refer to absolute pressure uh, given by p0 plus rho g sine theta yc pc always uh, pressure at centroid always linked with centroid location this is the only resultant hydrostatic force at upper surface here okay at this surface because plate have uh, top and bottom surface we now look at the top surface so the force at the top surface give you fr equal pressure times area and this pressure is uh, pressure through the centroid of area a uh, more useful equation is this one fr equal to p0 plus rho g sine theta y at the centroid times a so there's a diagram if you if you break the hydrostatic diagram so if you look at the diagram on the left hand side of the screen here so above the plate surface, the hydrostatic component will look like this. The bottom one will be uh, uniform distributed pressure, but on the top will be different depending on the height of the water. Because each point, for example, the point here will have the H at this H, this point will add this h this one will add this h 
each point will give you different pressure. Yeah. So um, uh, just uh, also a remark. So if you want to obtain uh, the net force on a surface, we can use the notation PC as gauge pressure. So we can look at uh, the value of PC will equivalent to gauge pressure underwater. Yeah, this is underwater case. Okay. Next class, we are going to look at how to find the location of the FR. Today, we only look at the general equation, how to find FR from the equation of uh, FR equal to integrate of PDA. And to take home, the equation is this one, yeah? FR equal to uh, P0 plus rho uh, G sine theta YC times A. Okay, so this is the equation for today uh, when you talk about hydrostatic force. Next lecture, we look at how do you find the exact location of your FR. This lecture, uh, today lecture, we only look at the component of the force, the magnitude of the force. Okay, I stop the recording.